Hey y'all, this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Y'all, you see a bunch of stuff here. Um, I was going through some of my supplies and I thought I would bring you a video of some of my favorite craft supplies. So, uh, if you're new to crafting and you're just trying to figure out, okay, what kind of craft supplies do I need? Um, you can just start off by just maybe having maybe pen, pencil, some scissors, and some glue. You can make anything with that. But then if you want to start gradually kind of advancing, getting a little bit more at different supplies and so forth, you, you can really start accumulating a bunch of stuff. And believe me, I've accumulated this stuff over years and years. Um, so I just thought I would just bring you some of my favorite craft supplies. So I'm just going to start over here with scissors. Scissors are the number one thing I think you need in your craft room. If you, um, if you don't have any scissors, that makes it pretty hard. But I like to buy the Fisker scissors. These are actually, I, well, I usually get them from Joanne Fabrics. And I usually can get them like a two-pack and everything and then when they start getting grungy with lots of glue and stuff on them that's when I just toss them away or I'll just mainly use them for like tape and things like that where it doesn't really matter so but a good good pair of scissors um, is always great to have when you're doing your crafting now I have a pair of scissors that are gold handled I keep those on over there with my sewing I try to only use those on my sewing and on my fabrics because paper will dull your scissors so if you're just if you're trying to figure out why your scissors are not cutting well it's probably because you're trying to cut fabric and you've recently kept cutting maybe your papers or stuff like that and it does dull them so i know that you can buy like um paper like the scissor the scissor sharpeners um, but to me, I think it's just a little bit easier just to buy another good pair of scissors or just keep them, keep the ones that are dull for your fabrics and just move them over to your paper section of your craft space. Um, so anyway, I like the nice big Fisker scissors. Now I try to keep some smaller scissors as well. And these, I think I got these on, um, scrapbook.com and I think I did these as well. And you can see these came from scrapbook.com. You can kind of see right there. But this is a good little pair of scissors. It's a good little sharp pair. It's good to get into little tiny spaces. So, um, yeah. I one day was cleaning out my craft drawer. And I realized I have so many pairs of scissors. Because I don't like to throw them away. And that's the bad thing is. is I don't like to throw them away. I, I keep thinking. Well they still are going to work on my paper. And I'll keep them. But then I buy more scissors for my fabric. And then it gets used by paper. You know the whole drill. So if you don't want your scissors to get dull don't use them on your paper if you've bought them specifically for your fabrics okay so i thought i would bring up hole punchers okay i have used this one and used it as such a workhorse this one is an ek successes hole punch it's got a 1 8 inch hole and it's great because it's i love this one it's got a guide on it and that's what i love about this one how it's got that guide and uh, so this one actually works out wonderfully. You can also kind of do like this and kind of hold that together. But I just don't worry about that. But I actually bought one pair, this one pair on Amazon years ago. And um, then one day I found them at Michael's and they were on clearance. So I bought another one just so I'd have a spare. But this one, I love this hole punch. So if you don't have this hole punch, um, I don't even know. Um, you might be able to find it on the Amazon, but it is an EK Successes hole punch. One eighth inch. I'll see if I can link some of these items below if you're interested. And maybe you're new to crafting or something that I use that maybe is interest of interest to you. Okay, so this one right here, this crocodile, um, I like this one because see, you've got the 1 8 inch hole there and a 3 16 right here. I love this one because you can get up into big spaces. Like if you need to punch a hole in the middle of something, you've got this right here. Now this one will also put, um, put your little um, things on your 
pages, you know, all your little, I can't remember what they're called. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't even use that. I, I, that's probably why I don't remember it very much. Eyelets. Um, but that's what you can use for that. But I mainly use mine just for punching holes. So, and then I have this one and I mainly use these as well, just for punching holes. You can put your eyelets with this one as well. I do like this one, but I'll be honest, sometimes I get confused. Okay, which side am I going to put it on? So, yeah. Anyway, I keep it handy, keep it close, but I find myself, if I need a quick hole, this is my go-to right here. Corner rounders, corner chompers. Do y'all know that there are so many different corner chompers? Actually, let me pull out another one that I have. Okay, so this is the one I mainly use. It's got the one eighth inch and then the quarter inch. I could tell you, I really like this. But sometimes, if you watch my video yesterday, sometimes it doesn't always get my, my corners as straight as I would like them. But for the most part, it works okay. So it's got the half inch and then this side is the quarter inch. So I really do like having this in my space. Sometimes I've noticed with this one, sometimes my handles start sliding off. I don't know if you have this and if you experience that same thing, but sometimes they do and I have to push them back up. Now, I also have this one because one day I was trying to replace this one. I'm like, oh, look what I found. Mm -mm. Stub and scallop, y'all. So it's different. So let me see this. See how that one does? And let me flip it around. I'm gonna have to cut this one a little better. Let me, so I can show you guys. Let me cut it a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one as a stub. So you can make tickets with this one, okay? And the other side is that scallop, okay? So got that one, and then let me cut this off so you'll be able to see. And then this one actually is large and small angles, so. This one is the small angle, and that's the larger angle. So I'll be honest, I don't use those as much. I mainly use the rounders. Those are my favorites. Okay. So, let me get my scissors back over there. So now let's talk about bone folders. Y'all, these old bone folders that come with your We Are Memory Keepers boards, the punch boards and all that, and like your scoreboard or whatever, that's one of my favorite tools. I love this old thing. I've got several of these because I've got several of the We Are Memory Keepers punch boards, and I have used the punk out of these. I have multiples of these, and um, I use them all the time, like mainly with my scoreboard or whatever, but I always have these handy. This one's kind of worn down. But I really do like it. Then one day I saw Becky um, over on her channel using this. And I'm like, I've got to have this. I got it on Amazon. And this is a Teflon bone folder. I love this thing. So it was a great, great, great buy. It really was. Okay. So those are my bone folders. That's pretty much what I use. I, I don't really use a whole lot of other different ones. That's mainly what I use. Let's move on to adhesives, okay? So, let's talk about glue guns. If you've seen any of my videos, this Surebonder glue gun, I got this on surebonder.com, and it literally is my favorite glue gun I have ever had. Because it's number one, you can take it off the stand, you can turn it on and off, it doesn't drip everywhere, I love it. Look, I had it on and that's all that dripped. So that is actually nothing. And this little rubber thing right here, it actually is the best thing ever for it to collect your glue. If you don't have this glue gun, it is one good one to invest in. Now I know that they don't have this color, but they have some different colors at Hobby Lobby. So it's worth it. It really, really is. And I absolutely love this glue gun. It's like one of my favorite tools in my craft room. Okay, 
So now we're going to talk about, let's talk about staplers. So I have two, two or three different kinds of staplers, and this is one that I don't use very often, but it's great to be able to, if you're trying to put a journal together or something, to be able to get in the center. If you want to staple the center, this one is great. One year, I, I, my daughter asked me, what do I want for Christmas? And I told her the big long stapler. I think I got it, I think she got it for like 13 bucks on Amazon. So it was a great deal. This is my favorite stapler. This tiny attacher. I love this. The staples last me forever and it's a Tim Holtz and it's one of the best staplers I have. I have the regular small one that looks like this. I have this long one, but this is my go-to. I love this, love, love, love this stapler. So if you need a stapler, that's one a good one to get. Okay, move that out of the way. Tape. Y'all know I love score tape, and I really, um, I can tell the difference. I used to love the red line tape, the red tape, and let me just tell you, I love the score tape. I think it works so well, and like when you're making albums and so forth, I think it actually is a great, great um, product to have in your craft room, and when you're making um, journals or albums, it's nice to have different size. This is the one inch. I usually have one inch, a half inch, and like a quarter inch, but I do love the three eighths inch and the eighth inch as well. I get them on Amazon. So now let's talk about this tape runner. This right here, I buy, I buy the tape runners at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at most craft stores, uh, but I find myself always picking it up at Hobby Lobby, and I hate the fact that it's $12.99. You probably can get it cheaper on Amazon, but I just bought the refills for this little thing. Because let me just tell you, I have had this one right here, and look, it needs to have the, the, pa the tape paper taken off of it. I need to get some more because I used it up. But I have had a lot of problems with my ATG gun, and I actually prefer this. I really do. I always find myself going back to just a little blue tape runner. You always need some good scotch tape. I keep this little tape dispenser here in my craft room and um, it always is up here by my computer and it's always good to have one. Now, if you don't have a little tape dispenser, just use a little regular tape, you know, just some regular tape, scotch tape. But this tape dispenser was super cheap. I think I got it like a long time ago at Tuesday morning. When Tuesday morning was great. But yeah, always need some good tape. Okay, let's talk about glue. Okay, glue, glue, glue. Y'all seen me use this one. I absolutely love Art Glitter Glue. It's my favorite. I have used barely Art Glue. I... I'll be honest, I kind of like uh, our glitter glue better, but they're pretty much close to the same. Um, but I like, I, I always seem to gravitate back to our glitter glue. It's one of my favorites. And so I always keep this. And I also have a smaller bottle with the little tip on the top with the pen. I lose my pen quite a bit. So then I'll have to order another one or I'll just have to go back to not using the little fine point tip. That's the only thing bad about it. But um the glue itself is great glue and it works really well. It dries fast. My favorite wood glue. I get this from the Wood Connection. It's the site where I get all my little wood pieces. So the wood glue that they have is $2.99. And when I bought this, like what? When I bought my wood pieces like over a year ago, I bought two bottles of this and I'm down to here. This is my second bottle. So I have, it lasts me a while and it works so well. It really, really does. So I got my wood glue. Fabri-Tac. fabri, -Tac. fabri -Tac is a great glue. If you're making like journals, like when I made the um, little golden book journals, I use the fabri -Tac to put my fabric covers on. Oh man, this stuff works so good. I absolutely love this, love this. And I, it just kind of goes far and it just sticks, takes a minute to dry, but it's great, great glue. Let's talk about this Mod Podge, okay? I love Mod Podge glue, works great. I seem to go back to this one more. Um, yes, in the past I've called it Mod Podge and it's just kind of how it comes out. I do know it's called Mod Podge, but 
it is great glue. I really do like the glue. Now, I'll tell you what other glue I have in my craft room. This is E6000. I like it okay. I just hate the fact that it takes too long to dry and it's really smelly. Now, I found this one at Hobby Lobby. It says low odor. I have not tried it yet. I hope that it smells better. But I would hate to make things for my craft fair using E6000 and the smell still be there a week from now. You don't want to sell anything that smells like glue. You just don't. So I keep in my craft room just in case. And I only bought this one because it said low odor. So we'll see how it is. And it's $7.99. So it wasn't too cheap. So anyway. So those are some of the basic things that I use in my craft room. But let me just say, you can just use, if you have paper, scissors, and glue, and a ruler, and a pen and pencil, you can make almost anything. If you're just new to crafting and that's what you have, just use your imagination and just and just start creating. You know, sometimes, like me, I've been kind of in a little rut. You know, I felt like this week I've came in my craft room a few times and I just felt like, you know, what do I want to make? You know, and you're kind of like, what do I want to make? And then I realized that, you know what, I just didn't want to make anything at that time. But then there's sometimes I come in and I just pull things out and I just start going at it. I really do. And um, yeah, so just make whatever comes to you and do the best you can. Just, you know, follow your heart on whatever you want to make. Do what makes you happy and um, make something beautiful and uh, make something to share with someone. Make some great cards or whatever. And you can do that with just paper, pen, and glue. You can do that that easy. And yeah, all these other gadgets, they're all great to use and have. But if you just have those basics, it's always um, just a good thing to have. Now, I want to talk about some of my favorite trimmers. Now, oh, and then my, my scoreboard just went flying. Y'all, I have this Cricut trimmer, and I've been using it for a bit. And I have to say, I really do like it. It's number one. It's 13 inches versus 12, okay? Okay. And then it goes all the way, the ruler goes all the way to 16 inches. And I have not even had to change the blade yet. So I really do like this one. I do love the other ones um, that I had been using. But this one, I have to say, thanks Cricut, this was my favorite. So I have that. And then um, one of my other favorite things is this good old scoreboard. It has had it. It's been drawn on. It's got marks on, glued on, everything. But it's still going. I have another one that I've had for like two years. Still in the pack that I found on clearance one day at, at Tuesday morning. And I haven't opened it yet. Because you know why? Because this one's still working for me. So it's always nice to have a good scoreboard. If you're trying to buy supplies for your craft room. Um, there's several different, there's an, I think there's an EK Successes scoreboard. This is We Are Memory Keepers. I know that they have like um, all kinds of different brands or whatever, but this one is one of my favorites. It really, really is. So I use this quite a bit and um, it comes in handy to have a good scoreboard in your craft room. And um, those are basics, y'all. Good old basic craft supplies. Now, all the crickets, all the sewing machines, all the stuff, it's all great to have those. And But if you don't, it's okay. You can still be creative. You can still just take some paper and just make something. Just use your imagination. You may say, I'm new to crafting and I'm not very good. Well, you know what? You can still do it and you can still try. In my craft group, I've had somebody say, well, I'm new to crafting. I'm not going to be as good as the other people. That doesn't matter. As long as you do your best, that's all you need to do. Just try. Just try. Do your best. And that's good enough. It's, it's good enough. And so just go in that mindset and just start, just, just start creating. Or do you know what? Go to Pinterest and get inspired. Look at a magazine. I've looked at a magazine at the store and I'm standing in line and I see something on the front. And I'm like, I can make that. And I'll go home and I'll figure it out and I'll make it. You know, so just use your imagination and just do your best and try your hardest. That's it. 
Anyway, I hope that you found this informative. I hope you found this helpful. If you're looking into different craft supplies or whatever, um, you know, trying to find different things for your craft room. This is some things that I find helpful in my craft room that I use occasionally and um, some a little bit more than others. But, um, but yeah, just, just, just accumulate things little by little. The stuff that, you know, craft supplies are not cheap. They're a good investment. But just a little by little. And eventually you'll have yourself a good supply of craft supplies. And um, yeah, and you'll find, find what you like best in your craft room as well. So anyway, thank you so, so much for stopping by. I hope you found this helpful. I really do. I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to do this video for a little bit because it's been a long while since I've done craft supplies. Now I think I'm going to come back and do a We Are Memory Keepers punch boards um, haul that I have or supplies that I have and which ones are my favorites. So I will come back with that. And um, yeah, some that I use and some that I don't use. But anyway, thanks so much everyone. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Oh, and don't forget, if you're new to my channel, please please subscribe and don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It helps me so much. And I appreciate each and every one of you coming back to watch my videos every day. Thank you. Bye-bye.